citizens, and welcome back to Fisting Jawa Save the Universe. Today, Jawa and I are teaming up to bring you a comprehensive video about all the different ways you can control Star Citizen in-game. That's right, Fist. There are so many different ways to control your character and ship in the game. Fist and I have drastically different styles when playing. Exactly, Jawa. I like to dogfight and do FPS missions more than I do other game loops or professions in the game. I mainly stick to mouse and keyboard controls for everything except dogfighting, as I've been playing FPS PC games for decades that way. When I do dogfight, I prefer the HOSAS or hands-on stick method that is supported well in Star Citizen. I, on the other hand, prefer to play with the gamepad, specifically the Xbox One controller when doing the routine running around with my character and in FPS. When I am flying or mining, I prefer to use the HOTAS or hands-on throttle and stick method of control because it feels more traditional to me. And I am able to employ my flaps control for secondary tasks such as mining and soon savage with 318. So everyone, both Joe and I are going to detail the specific gear that we each have and how we set it up in Star Citizen, the very basics. Then we're gonna do some gameplay demonstration. Please pay special attention to the on-screen displays down below if you want to specifically see what our hands are doing and what buttons we are pressing. Finally, after going through the four methods of control in Star Citizen, Fist and I will depart from our HOTAS and HOSAS controls and each try out a method we have never used before, which is called HOMAS, or hands-on mouse and stick. That's right, Jawa. This mode is where our left hand controls the throttle of the ship, but the mouse controls the attitude and directionality of the ship. Since I use HOSAS, and since Jawa uses HOTAS, this should make for some interesting gameplay. Well, that's the introduction, folks. If you want to skip ahead to a specific part of the video, please use the chapter markers in the timeline below. And don't forget to watch our final thoughts and recommendations at the end of this video. Well, thank you all for watching the video. If we have earned it and you ended up liking the video, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing the video to help the channel grow. Don't forget, we stream live every Thursday at 7 p.m. Mountain Time with the B Team, and Java streams every Sunday at 9 a.m. Mountain Time with Java with Java. First up is me with mouse and keyboard. Well, hello everybody, and this is Fist25, and we're now doing the mouse and keyboard section of basically the, the space flight, and it's not really an FPS tutorial, but I did want to go over that we I use the keyboard and mouse for about 90% of what I do in Star Citizen, maybe even more than that. Um, certainly my mouse and keyboard are in a position on my desk where they're very easy to use. They're very up front and uh, there'll be a picture of my desk in here somewhere, but my sticks are actually to my left and right of me. And that's one of the big reasons why I only use my sticks for dogfighting anymore is because I have to reposition my body in order to use, them. excuse me, to use them effectively. So I've come to rely upon the mouse and keyboard for a lot of things that I do in Star Citizen. So as you can see, I have the virtual keyboard and mouse up on the screen. So as I turn and move the mouse around, you can see that. And as I use the keys, the keys will highlight on the screen. Um, so just to show you, I mean, general everyday usage, walking around in the game um, or especially, I should say, in FPS type of usage, I, I will use the mouse and keyboard. I'm used to that because it is, I guess, my preferred method on the on the PC to control a character, um, if that makes sense. I know a lot of you guys play FPS games and things like that on the PC, and I think that's kind of one of the default method methods. And I'm, I'm just it's been so ingrained from decades of playing PC games that I'm very used to mouse and keyboard. And then you have games like Freelancer, which are 
made for the mouse and keyboard. And while you can use a joystick or a gamepad on games like like this and like that, it's you can use mouse and keyboard pretty easy. Oh, let's see if I make the store. Just made it. Okay. So we are, of course, in Lorville here, and we are we are going to do this tutorial more for spaceflight. So um, we're going to show basic spaceflight maneuvers and flying around, taking off, things like that. How you can and how I use the mouse and keyboard. Um, and then we're going to do a dogfighting mission and show you again the key presses I use. And you can see how I move my mouse. And this is by no means a tutorial on dogfighting. This is more of a what do you think about using mouse and keyboard one to fly your ship and two to dogfight so think of it like that because we're going to go over the hosas the hotas the homas and the gamepad along with this mouse and keyboard to kind of give you a choice of what what you think is best and in addition to my opinion and java's opinion on using these type of control schemes to start a citizen so, I mean, as you can see me walking around Lorville, very smooth, very easy. I'm, you know, I'm easy, uh, easily able to strafe. That is using the A and D keys. It works just the same in a ship. Um, yeah, I was thinking about doing FPS, but I think we want to limit this tutorial to spaceflight because that is. Oh, I uh, walked in front of me. This that is really what Star Citizen is kind of about in some aspects with that let me get, let me grab my ship i'm gonna cut here and i'll see you in the hangar bay all right guys so as you can see i have decided to pull out an rsi scorpius for what we're gonna do here <laughs> and this actually is take two of uh this tutorial i tried 318 it's just so unstable in the ptu that i i just couldn't use that footage and in addition, ended up using a Drake cutter and I got killed. And so I needed to change ships and it just didn't come out very fluent. So while this is not a tutorial here, um, for some reason, the ship is actually powered on. We're going to power it down. <laughs> um, typically, at this point, I just hit R to power on the ship. Let me let's do that again here. Is the engines are on. Sometimes when you change shields and systems and weapons around, the game gets a little weird. Anyway, hitting R is for uh, flight ready. Um, and then inside the cockpit here, you can see I can hold F. I can look around. I can use buttons. I can use my two MFDs. I can look up and look down and things like that. Um, and we'll get into a little bit more of the controls when we're in space, but we're going to just kind of fly around Hurston a little bit right now. So the first thing I need to do is one, I always turn on my VTOL when I take off, especially upwards. Two is um, you can bind this to a key and I have, but to get out of the hangar, you hit F11 on your keyboard, go to friends and tell Lorville, hey, I want to get out of here. So you click this little talk icon. They say I'm clear to launch, and I can either hit F11 or F1 to get out of that screen. And you can see up above us that uh, the hangar doors are opening. By the way, I'm using Z and moving my mouse around for free look. You change that up to go back to normal, hold down F4 and hit asterisk on the keyboard on the number pad, and then you're back. Hit F4 to go back into your normal view. Sometimes there's two externals, so you have to hit F4 twice. Now I'm going to go back to external. I'm going to just hit spacebar. You see, I just lifted straight up, straight up. Control is down, spacebar is up. So we're going to lift straight up out of this hangar. Just like that. Nice and easy. I did not move my mouse, guys. If I would have moved my mouse, the ship would have started moving. And if I would have held it, it would have been in some weird position. By the way, quick way to stop this, hold down shift, right shift. Boom. And let me show you what that does in first person. My mouse was all the way over here, so I just kept rotating. If you hold down right shift, it will center your reticle movement. So I boom, now you'll stop moving. So back into third person view. 
I'm gonna move the ship up a little bit. We're gonna rotate around. I'm gonna show you in for landing gear. Just tap it. And just like that, my wings also spread out. Now I don't believe this ship might go back. If I hit Alt K, the wings go back, but my gear stays up. So that's that's a way to articulate the wings. Reset our view. Now from here, I have some basic controls. Let me get out of the airport area and we will go over those. If you hold down F4 like this and you kind of mouse scroll down, you will uh, move some of your view. If you want to go back even further, hold down F4 and use the arrow key. And you can actually free look all over the place if you want to. So just to get out of the airport area a little bit there, notice I'm holding down the W key. The W key gives me forward thrust. Now, when I'm back in my ship view, notice this little carrot is up here. Well, that's cruise control right there with the little arrow and the line above it. If I hit C, that turns off and my speed starts going down. This is my speed tracker, basically. This line, the red and above means I am above SCM, standard combat maneuvering speed. And the blue and below means I have the most control over my ship while I'm flying it around. So if I'm above that in the red, it's not the most ideal performance, but it is, I can still do stuff. Over here in my head, the altimeter, um, my weapons and how much ammo they have. Um, these are lasers, so they do recharge my fuel. Uh, how many countermeasures I have and basically flare and chaff. Um, my gimbal situation over there. My landing gear is up, so that light is off. VTOL is still on. I am coupled and I have ESP on. Then up here is my pitch ladder right here. And up here is my compass, basically my heading. And then up here is my signature for, with heat. Um, electro, electromagnetic signature. Elect electric signature. <laughs> I can't say that word today. And then my cross section right here. So we're going to turn on cruise control. Go back to the exterior view here. And so with mouse and keyboard, your mouse here controls the attitude of your ship. So moving my mouse up like this, that will pitch my ship up. Right? Even a loop just like that. And I got to pull it back down. If I pull it down, that pitches the ship down. Picks the ship up. So that's pitch up and down, right? If I want to roll the ship, that is actually on the keyboard and it is the Q and E keys. So E will roll my ship to the right and Q will roll my ship to the left. If I want to yaw the ship, that is also on my mouse. That's the left and right on my mouse. Because we use thrusters in this game, I can basically just yaw all the way around if I want to. We have more than just main engines. We actually have good yaw in Star Citizen. So yaw left is left on the mouse. Yaw right is right on the mouse. Um, to turn off cruise control, I'm going to hit C and let myself uh, go down a little bit. If I want to increase my speed, I will mouse wheel up. W is for forward. If I want boost on that, I hold down the left shift. Notice my engines boosted up on that. So that is basically afterburner or boost. Um... If I, I'm going to put it back on cruise control. If I want to go up vertically, those are, those are thrusters. I hit space bar. And you can see I lost some of my engine speed to do that because it has to redirect that thrust on the bottom of the ship so I can go up. And vice versa, if I want to go down, I hit left control. And then the thrusters on the top of the ship will start pushing the ship downward. If I want to strafe to the left, I will hold down the A key. It doesn't yaw my ship. It's just thrusters on the right push the ship to the left and vice versa. If I want to strafe to the right, I'll hold down the D key and I will start strafing to the right. And I'll take off cruise control. If I want to go backwards, I hit the S key. So let me hit the S key and now it has to basically reverse your forward thrust first. And then you obviously I'm going backwards right now. I can also use boost to go faster backwards and I can raise and lower my speed limiter. You can also use boost to stop. You can use boost to boost left. 
boost right, all that kind of stuff in this game. So, my personal setup here is, say I'm in cruise control here and my speed limiter is set pretty high, I my keybind is control caps lock and it takes me back down to SCM speed. But then it turns on my caps lock, so I have to hit that button twice. Um, another thing here I have is space break. So if I'm if I'm going pretty good and I'm going to SCM speed, I need to slow down real quick. I can hold down X. Let me go back into the cockpit. I can hold down X on the keyboard and it will use boost to slow down any attitude I have. And now I am actually stopped. That's that's the fastest way for me to stop. But a lot of times if I'm just trying to stop forward momentum, I'll hold down S to go backwards, hit boost, and I'll just keep an eye on this this bar over here. What else for flight movement around here? Um, that is the basics uh, in the cockpit. You know, you can hold down F your interaction key and interact with different buttons and things. Uh, you can also hold down Z in the cockpit and look around and look at different things. And when you let go, it should snap back to forward. Again, my reticle right here, I can just you see that I'm yawing the ship to the left. If I hold down the right shift button, it centers everything and I center the middle. One more thing, we're going to talk about the TBI, which just showed up on the screen. So I'm going to move to the right. You're going to see this little guy right over here. This indicator is your TBI. That actually indicates the direction your ship is traveling. And it's slowly making its way over. As I stop turning so fast, they will start to line up and it'll fade out. And now my ship is going forward in this direction. So this happens in every direction you go. And it kind of gives you a, tr a true vector is, is kind of what it gives you there. So that is basic flying and atmosphere uh, with the RSI Scorpius. What we're going to do now is we're going to climb out into space, uh, do a very brief section on that, and then we'll get into some kind of a fight. I'll meet you in space. All right, guys. So now we are actually up here in space, and uh, I want to show you just a few things while we're up here. First off, attitude works the same, but in zero G, looking at Everest Harbor here, it's a lot easier to maneuver. We don't have the friction and drag of the atmosphere, so it's much easier to yaw. It's much more free, to pitch, things like that. But you just got to understand you are in 3D space here. Um, in combat, this ship in particular has gimbal weapons. What that means is I have a weapon that sits on a little uh, a gimbal, and um, gimbal is kind of a way to do semi-automatic targeting once I have an enemy targeted if I can keep the center reticle close to the pip whether it's a lead or lag pip my gimbals will try to go to that pip as much as they can and assist me in hitting the target the trade-off with that is typically unless you have only have a size one hard point that you have to move your weapon size down. So if you have a size three hard point, you put a size three gimbal, you can only put a size two weapon on it. So that, that is part of the trade-off here. You can just size up and then you're, you won't have any type of gimbal. When I hit G for gimbal mode, um, I just hit the G key. You can see that there's a circle around here. That is basically your gimbal uh, diameter here. Your gimbals are on and you are in auto mode over here, which means they will automatically target. I hit G one more time. Notice I go into target mode. And as I move my reticle around, my weapons will fire in different directions here because they're on that gimbal. I hit G again. I go back into lock and they just fire straight ahead. Now notice when I'm firing, I'm, I'm just hitting the left mouse button. Well, that's the, that, that those two sets of, of laser repeaters. If I hit the right mouse button, fires. It's not firing at all right now. All right, guys, so my apologies. I had to cut this because I had some errors with my weapons. Um, basically, I only had two weapons firing, and that's not how the ship is supposed to be laid out. It's supposed to have four uh, gimbal size twos stock for the pilot, which I have fixed. As you can see, I have four weapons firing right now. To fix that, 
in both 317.4 and 318, I have to take all my weapons off, including the gimbals, save it, and then put them all back on and then save it. So just a way to kind of show you that. So back to uh, the fighting uh, kind of part here. As as you as we talked about, we can move around and all the attitude uh, in space is a lot easier because we're in zero G. But to shoot my weapons, um, because all my weapons here are on this first column, everything's going to be every, everything of that is going to be tied to my left mouse button with mouse and keyboard. So I'm going to hold down the left mouse button. You'll see all those weapons fire um, from an exterior view. It's the weapons there on all the wings. So that's how those work. Now, I can switch that up. I can also use my right mouse button as I'm clicking that. Nothing's happening. But if we go down and we change our gun layout around a little bit, we can go to our weapons on our MFD. We can go to our guns page and everything is tied to zero. Well, group zero means it's the left mouse button. We can tie two of the weapons to group one. We go back to system and you'll see group zero and one are on. So left mouse button and notice the columns here separate into column zero, column one. Left mouse button is those, right mouse button is those. And we can even, I mean, we can change that up as well. It's typically zero, one, one, zero for this one. So something like that. And I, and I don't like that. Let me fix that. So my left mouse button is my left guns. Right mouse button is the right guns. Now I don't have a co-pilot in my Scorpius side, so I don't have those size threes with the co-pilot behind me, but that's okay. So now you see how the weapons work. If I want to turn on the gimbal, I hit G. We talked about this, this line in here. If I hit G again, now I can move my gimbals and my guns will start to follow the direction that I shoot. So that is how that works. I typically just leave my gimbals turned on like this and let them auto target. You switch into missile operator mode. You hit the middle mouse button. If I click that, notice I have 12 Tempest size two missiles on here. If I want to increase the number of missiles that I can shoot, the maximum being four, I hit the G key. Notice that is now over at two. G again, now it's three. G again, now it's four. One more time, it's back to one. If I want to switch the missile type, I hit the right mouse button. Now it loads up the Strike Force 2s. Different type of missile. And then G again to make more of them. Hit the right mouse button again, it's back to the Tempest. If I want to switch back to guns, I hit the middle mouse button. And it goes back to my guns with gimbal. You fire your missile, so I'll go ahead and test fire one. It's just your left mouse button. Boom, there goes the missile goes through a reload cycle and then the missile reloads. You really don't want to dumb fire missiles unless your target is so slow that it's not going to avoid it. You want to wait and you'll see when we get into combat uh, how the missiles will lock on and you get the two green rings. And once the second green ring is filled up is your best chance to hit your target. I don't re recommend unless you're firing at a slow target. Uh, shooting all four missiles at once, unless you have an abundance of them. Um, I would do one or two at a time and, you know, let, because uh, countermeasures are pretty easy to use. So to give you a hint here, uh, I'm going to go ahead and zoom out here and I'm going to use my uh, flare countermeasure, which is uh, against heat seeking. And uh, well, it's for you can use it's it's called a decoy. It's used for all types of scenarios, but it's most effective against heat seeking uh, devices. So if I hit H, oh, there you go. There's the flare. It kind of comes out. You can see our flares and our chaff or decoy and noise are tracked over over here. So if I hit H again, the 47 goes down to a 46. If I want to use noise, which is a chaff, I will hit the J key. And and so that that's basically what the chaff does a bunch of charged particles that have the same radar signature as the ship. So that is uh, the uh, flare and chaff. That's how that works. So when in space, um, another thing is the power triangle. And let me bring that up here. 
Okay, you can see everything right now is balanced. F8 balances all those. If I hold down F5, you can see that some of my power, I am pushing towards the weapon systems. If you notice, well, let me go back to guns. Somebody's probably going to scam me or something. Um, you notice my guns are at 66 uh, rounds right now. If I hit F5 again, they'll go up because I am pushing more power to them. If I push even more power to them, I'll have even more rounds available to shoot. And if I go to 100%, I can get 76. And they actually recharge faster. If I deplete my guns, they're faster to recharge as well. What that does is that takes away from... Uh, my shield's recharging and my and my boost recharging. You hit F8 to go back to the middle. Next up is F6. F6 means I'm going to give more power to my boost. So my boost, when I use it, it'll recharge a lot faster. F7 gives power more power to your shields. So if you want to balance a 33% between them all, hit F8, and that's the center. Usually when I'm in a fight, some kind of a dogfight, I either hit F5 once or twice, so that once I finish shooting all my guns, they can recharge faster. So, as I said, typically when I when I go out to actually do dog fighting, I use my my sticks. But when I'm just cruising around the verse and just going to a space station or doing flybys, doing cargo runs, things like that, I typically use my mouse. Um, you know, I, I bump my speed up. I hold down W. I use cruise control. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, when I quantum, I hit B, bring up my quantum, hold B to quantum. You know, it, it's just, it's very easy and it's a very easy setup to where my monitor is in relationship to how far away it is from my face, where my microphone is, where my cameras are, because I use FOIP all the time. Um, it's pretty darn easy also for me to roll, pitch, yaw. The only time I find it hard to use mouse and keyboard is when I'm trying to do a maneuver that takes my fingers away from my home keys on my keyboard. So when I have to like go down and straight left at the same time, like A and control, that kind of movement messes me up a little bit. Or when I need to boost left shift and straight left or something like that. Other than that, I can use my pinky for the boost and then I can use pretty much every other key to go where I need to go. Um, and I have my space break X tied in to automatically use boost. So all I'm in is X. So that's why I do it that way. It, it's just, it's, I don't know. It's, it's comfortable. I like having my fingers on the home key. I can hit gimbals. I can target really easy. I chaff and flare pretty easy land. Put out my gear, quantum, uh, ping. I can, I'm, I'm a fairly good and fast typist, so that may be why I'm more comfortable. But enough of that. Let's get into a little bit of space combat here, and I'll see you when we're in the mission. All right, guys, so we're start, about to get into combat here. Notice my speed limiter is set just a little bit above, maybe a, a little bit, just a little bit above what I would normally fight, SCM or something like that. I'm waiting for a red target to show up. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to missiles. I know this is this is a bad guy. I know that. All contacts. At least I'm pretty sure. There's a mantis. Uh, I'm supposed to protect this guy. So you can see that green circle kind of coming around. Now, I might get a crime stab by doing this, but uh, we're going to go ahead and fire the missiles. So the missiles locked on. We're going to switch the missile type around. Our strike force. This guy's no one showed up as a bad guy. So that is there we go. Now we got him going. So you see, I'm going to back up so I can keep my missiles and going in range. A little bit of desync there. Boom. Shoot another missile at him. Now I'm going to switch over to guns. I do not know why these guys are not showing up as red. This has been happening in the game for quite a while. Although, oh, now he's red. Now he's red. All right. Now I'm going to left trigger. Me, now get back here. Me. 
That's just my left guns, right? Trigger my right guns. Both triggers. Uh, that's one way to go. So let's hit T to target this guy. And we're gonna just okay, countermeasures. I usually hit him a few times. You can actually change the amount of countermeasures you fire by hitting how many times you know you you fire 10 by hitting the H key once. So there's a guy, he's pretty far rank, so I'm gonna shoot missiles. Oh, too close. And we're just gonna go after him with guns. The Scorpius. Pretty powerful. Usually, this is not a dogfight in tutorial, but usually I try to turn into their turns. And we're going, there we go. Good job. All right, good job to me. That, that might be it. I don't know who that guy is. Oh, me, it might not be anybody. So we're going to end that column. Uh, yeah, and hey, that's a quick 20 grand in the game. So <laughs> there we go. So now you saw how some missiles work. Um, I hope you saw how the how I was using the keys to find my targets, how I was using the or to, to move the ship. Holding WASD, moving the mouse around, all these different different accelerations, and you saw it on the screen. Uh, it's hard to, as, as I mentioned before, it's hard to explain it all when you're in the heat of the moment. And, you know, I wouldn't want to, even though it's easy with the Scorpius, I wouldn't want to be dedicated to just using mouse and keyboard. So, a lot, you know, there's a lot of times I play with my sticks turned off, so all I have is mouse and keyboard. So I've gotten fairly proficient at doing combat with them. So... There's the mouse and keyboard section, everybody. I uh, hope you learned something. All right, y'all. Next up is Java Sparky with the gamepad. All right, we'll go ahead and start the gamepad video um, where you enter the game in your hab. So to get up, I have it as left bumper and B. And we'll go ahead and get up. Uh, looking up and down, right and left with the right joystick forward back with the left joystick and also sides um, and to do both you uh, and if you use both you can just kind of maneuver around but let's go ahead and get out in the hallway and check that out okay so all right so as you can see using both sticks I'm able to move around quite well here all right now um, when you're setting up your gamepad, um, it's easier if you have like a template to do that on. And let me go over and open up my template here. Uh, let's click there. Yep, there it is. And here's my template. Um, this will be down in the notes below on where you can get this um, for the gamepad. And uh, there's different things to hold or modifier. Modifier is the... A left bumper so um, I, sometimes I say left bumper sometimes I'll say modifier so and where you set that up in game is right here you hit escape options key bindings advanced controls um, down in the bottom left and make sure you get over to gamepad uh, the main ones that we are going to be looking at um, are on foot that's what we're doing now. We're doing a little bit of on foot. Uh, the way you change things, let's say you want you don't want A here uh, for jump. You want something else. So you can select it with the left mouse button and right click it to make it go away. To add something there, you double click it. And I'm just going to go ahead and put it back on A here. And it says uh, it's already being used, but it's being used uh, in vehicles for countermeasures. So that's what I have um, done for the vehicle, but there's nothing here for moving around. So I'm going to go ahead and say yes. All right. Um, the other ones that we're going to talk about here are EVA, which are right down through here. And you'll see me use those commands when I get to there. And the next one is Ground Vehicle General. Um and then ground vehicle uh whoa, where'd it go uh ground vehicle movement uh i have it somewhat set up different on ground vehicle movement uh because i find it easier 
And then also we have some flights set up. I'll show you uh, just the regular, uh, you know, the movement one. So uh, that is basically where you set up everything. Um, you'll be able to find a copy of these bindings um, in the link below as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to head on out. Uh, unfortunately, um, it does not work for elevators. So I have to switch over to mouse and keyboard. I can use the select like I did over in the hab, but it's it just lights the lights. It doesn't do anything else. So I have to actually go to mouse and keyboard and press it. Um, yeah, it kind of takes away a little bit of the immersion. But one thing I do like about it, it it is nice that you can just kind of pan around. I'm kind of glitching there. But you know, I can stop and look at things and just kind of have full immersion. So I'm going to go ahead and head on up to the ASOP terminal. Uh, let's see, where are we going to go? We're going to go up here and over here. All right. And, yeah, it's still glitching on me for time. Okay, we got Children of the Corn happening here. And head on over to the ESOP terminal. All right. It also won't work on the ASOP terminal, which is kind of a bummer. So, back to the mouse and keyboard. So, I'm going to go ahead and pull a ship, and I'll Welcome meet you out there, all right? All right, here we are out here in the hangar. I... Uh, pulled my venture and come over here and I can just use my interact button because that goes ahead and puts out the ladder and puts me into the ship. All right, here we go. And we're going to close everything down. I also have um, a key set for call for landing and we're going to fire stuff up. So, now to be honest with you, I do not fly with the gamepad. I use my Hotas. But Fist wanted us to uh, kind of give it a shot uh, just in case one of you guys only has um, only has the um, the uh, just a gamepad. So, and I am having a little bit of trouble here. Let's see. All right. There's that. Okay. Ah, there it goes. For some reason, that Y, if you press that, sometimes it kind of locks into a forward um, viewing. So, going to put up my gear. And now I have my sticks here somewhat set up the way Fist has his Hosas set up. So, uh, I can... Uh, that's my yaw. Here's my pitch. Then on the other stick, I have roll. And then I also, if I move forward, it moves that forward. Uh, my throttle. So, and then I can roll there. So, and then for quantum, I go ahead and press that. Let's see if we can find a quantum marker somewhat close here. And uh, let's see here. There's one. All right. Let's see. So I'm going to go ahead and head on over to OM1 and show you how that works. All right. Here we go. So again, this is completely foreign to me. Um, but it did give me some excuse to uh, give this a shot. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and pull a mission. Um, and we're going to try and do dogfighting with this. All right? So we'll see in a few. All right. Wait, there he is. You're going to say neutralize. So I'm going to switch over to... Uh, let's see. Whoops. Yeah, it looks like he got a missile on me. And let's see if I can't get one on him. There we goes. All right. Yeah, I'm not used to doing dogfighting with uh, this, but... Um, 
Yeah, we will definitely see what we can do. Oh, boy. Yeah, trying to run here. Oh, boy. Yeah, let's see. There he is. Oh. Yes, I got him somehow. Let's see here. Let's see if I can't get him. Let's see. I am just not used to using this. Yeah, let's see. All right. Well, I got, got some hits on him. I got some hits on him. Yo, yep. It just... It, you know what? Um, dog fighting with the gamepad just isn't for me. So, um, let's see. When I respawn here, I'm going to uh, meet you guys on a moon. And um, we will definitely um, check that out. And, yeah, sorry. I'm just a little shaken from that. But, um, yeah, we're going to go down to a moon and get in a ground vehicle. All right. See you there. All right, I have us here at a Platinum Bay. Um, I've already pulled a Steve. Um, again, the game pan just does not like to work on the terminals, on the ASOP terminals or elevators, but it works fine on doors, on pressure locks. Um, yeah, it works fine there. So um, I can still kind of kick back and walk around. So yeah, here's our Steve up here. Go ahead and jump in it real quick. And in we get. All right, this is the gamepad controller with the ground vehicle. Uh, this is my preferred method of driving around in a ground vehicle. This is a little hard though, so you, it's a lot easier if you go third person, which is right there, and then you can just cruise around. Um, yeah, it's, as you notice, um, I use my left joystick for forward and reverse and my right joystick for turning. So it is a, relaxing for me to do this. And, but that's why, um, I have the gamepad controller, um, all hooked up for it. So anyway um as you know it's a lot easier to drive around on a planet than it is to do dog fighting but those of you that like the dog fighting go for it see if you can do it with the gamepad controller anyway i'm gonna zip around here but i will meet you guys up in space to show you some eva all right all right i'm gonna go ahead and show you eva uh again to uh operate the door it's just the interact button which i have as my y and I can just go ahead and cruise on out. Yeah, and I'm in EVA now. So what I'm gonna do is get out a little bit, turn around, there's my ship. Okay. Now, on my left uh, stick, I can go forward and back. And then left, right. And uh, the right stick is for view. This is just like the ground controls, except you do have that other axis of control you need. Uh, so if you push down the modifier, you can roll or you can pitch up or pitch down or strafe up and down. Sorry. And yeah, this is um, my preferred method of um, EVA is with the gamepad because I can just sit back in my chair and relax and just cruise around. So. Again, the gamepad may not be for you, but I really, really enjoy it, and I use it quite a bit. And so, uh, again, the bindings um, and the uh, template uh, are available. Just check the um, check the uh, notes below, and just kind of give it a shot. All right. Well, I'm going to get back in my ship here and see what kind of trouble I can get in. The next part of this video is Fist using his dual verbal HOSAS controls. Hey everybody, so it's Fist here and now it's time to talk about 
using sticks for uh, Star Citizen. Um, my personal setup that I use is a host SAS setup. I used to use the T16000 and by Thrustmaster, and they were fantastic. I loved them. Sometimes I wish I still had them. Um, the problem with those sticks is I had to put them on the desk. And before I had the current desk that I have, which is made for gaming, I had a bigger, a little bit bigger desk, and I had room on them, but I would have to be, you know, I'd have to put my hands on the side and do this, and my arms were real up, and after a while of doing that, it got uncomfortable. So I now have my sticks, and I know you can't really see them because they're not in the camera, but they are right here where my hands are. I'm actually moving them right now. Um, and I don't mind them there, although they are a little bit low. I, I don't hate them there. The problem is, is that when I, I like to lean back in my chair a little bit, my mouse and keyboard is right here in front of me. And when I'm doing this, now my arms are too far back. So I actually have to scoot back and kind of do this and just fly with sticks, which, which is fine. But when I want to use something that I don't have mapped or I can't remember what the mapping is on the stick, I have to pull myself a little bit closer and then I use my mouse and keyboard. So it's just a, that, a little bit of a trade off. Um, but I use dual verbal sticks now, uh, H-O-S-A-S, HOSAS, hand on stick and stick. And for this particular space game, Star Citizen, I freaking love it. It gives you six degrees of freedom, meaning my right stick controls the attitude of my ship, meaning I can pitch nose up, nose down. I can yaw left and right, and I can roll with my right hand, you know, left or right. With my left stick, forward and back is thrust, forward thrust, back thrust. Um, left and right is left and right strafe. And when I twist uh, to the right, I go down, twist to the right. Sorry, twist to the left, go down, twist to the right, go up. And then I have various buttons here for shooting things. And you'll see that when that comes on the screen. Apologize that I don't actually have a stick overlay. That's the best overlay that I can find. I think Java's going to use the same thing for the HOTAS. But up here on the screen, I actually have the verbal, uh, it's the verbal control app, basically. <laughs> you can see I have my left, uh, and I have verbal constellation alphas with a warbird base is what I have. They're not cheap. They are expensive, but they are actually much more accurate than, say, the T-16,000s. So the way I set this up, and it's different... The, the T-16000, I would actually bring up a program called Joy to Key. And I have a bunch of videos on that, and those aren't invalid anymore. But I don't use Joy to Key anymore. I don't need to. So I don't need to use it. But it still kind of sits there. And, uh, you know, I have a mirrored and a regular setup, but I just I just don't use it anymore. So should actually probably take it off of my <laughs> my quick launch bar. I use verbals now. So before I use it in the game, I, and I don't keep them on all the time because my verbals will prevent my Windows computer from sleeping. Why? Because they're probably they have micro movements and I don't know how to change that. But I do turn them off. I have them set up in a USB hub. And so I do turn them off when I'm not using them. You have to. Well, you don't have to, but it is preferred that you have them powered on and ready to go prior to even launching Star Citizen because it looks for those controls as soon as the game launches. And you don't, you can turn them off or sorry, turn them on afterwards, but it's not really the way to do it. But before I do that, I usually once a week I go in here and I calibrate it. So right now it's on my left stick. I'm going to hit calibrate action, see how kind of out of whack it is. It's not that out of whack. But as I move the stick around from corner to corner to corner to corner, those stabilize. I move my sliders around. I move some other of my uh, my sticks around. I, I do the, the twist. And now it's much more calibrated. And now they're all they're all steady, right? And I'll save the calibration to the profile. It will actually write the calibration to the memory in the stick. Just like that, it'll take it off of Windows and it's going to bring it right back in, loading the saved configuration and it'll show right back up just like that. 
Boom, the stick's right there. And I gotta do that with my right stick as well. So it'll read the current calibration. I will move it around all the axes here. Move it this way, do my sliders. Do this stick right here. And there you go, pretty much calibrated. I'll save that to its file, let it unload, reload. Then I can close this program and be ready to go. Uh, you can use this program as well to set up how your LEDs are. I actually set mine up as red on the left and green on the right, just like uh, a modern day aircraft would be. Port red wine, that's how you remember red's on the left. If you ever see the lights on an airplane, green, green is always on the right, red's on the left. Anyway, so this program is done and we are going to go ahead and close this. And we're going to go ahead and launch Star Citizen, and I will see you in the game in space. All right, guys. So once again, we're looking at Everest Harbor from space. We're in our RSI Scorpius. And I'm going to show you a little bit about the controls first before we start getting going here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit escape. Yep. Options real quick here. I'm going to turn off the virtual joysticks. And so this is the bane of my existence sometimes when I forget to turn my joysticks on before I go into the game, which happens all the time. I always have to come back here to controls. Under controls, here's the important part. Down here in the bottom right corner, it tells you mouse, gamepad, and then you have up to eight different joysticks you can select. So if you're going to mess with your control settings, which I have to every time, then you need to know what joystick is what. I happen to know my left stick, my thrust stick, throttle stick, basically, happens to be always HOTAS 2. It says HOTAS, it's not a HOTAS, it's a HOSAS, but it doesn't matter. It's joystick number two, okay? What I have to do every time is click on inversion settings, and then I have to go to flight, and then I have to go to flight movement. As you can see right now, flight strafe forward and backward is inverted, meaning it's flipped around. And I also have to flip around the velocity limiter. So what this means is when I push forward on my left stick, it'll actually go forward. When I mess with my speed setting, it'll actually work. I don't do this. It actually works in reverse for my thrust settings and my velocity limiter doesn't work at all. I have to use the scroll wheel on the mouse. That's not fun. So I have to it, keep it imperative in my head. Hey, turn your sticks on before you play Star Citizen. Another thing on this is when you go to key bindings, in here, this is all keyboard mouse settings. You can switch over to joystick HOTAS, and there's just one setting here. When you come in here, all the different settings you can do, what I recommend you do with your sticks is basically make your own mapping for your sticks, meaning I don't use uh, buzz kills or, or anybody else's custom verbal settings anymore or anything like that. I use the settings that I like and that I can remember. So to give you an idea for when I go to flight movement, hitch, yaw, roll. It's all on my right stick. It's all in those axes. Strafe up and down. It's the Z axis on my left stick, which is input two. Strafe left and right, X axis. Throttle back, back and forward, my Y axis. You get in the picture here. Boost on my left stick is my trigger key. That gives me my boost. My uh, speed limiter is one of my thumbsticks on the verbal. The reset to SCM is when I push in the thumbstick. Base brake is the very bottom button on my Verbal Constellation Alpha. Cruise control happens to be a, a different button on my left on my left stick as well. Then you get into other things like uh, your weapons, um, your missiles, things like that. So I fire my first weapon group with my trigger on my right stick. Button twelve on my right stick is the second we weapon group. Missile modes and switching operator modes is a different button, and then I can move and change my missiles around. Basically, I have it set up so, one, I can remember it, two, the way I like it, not the way somebody else likes it. This is what I recommend. This is what I've been doing for about a year, and this is the way I recommend this. What you can do once you have your profile set up the way you like it, you can click here down in uh, Control Profiles, 
you can actually save your settings right here. Um, this is what I remember doing. The last time I saved my settings was uh, March 26th of this year. So, you know, nine months ago. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, hit save control settings again, and we'll say this is fist troll trolls 12 21 22. Boom. Save. And now, if I want to or if I need to, one, I can share that. And I'll go ahead and put this in the Discord. I'll create a new channel in uh, the Discord links in the description below. And I'll give my settings in here for the dual verbal OSAS. We'll have Java, uh, Java, we'll have Java give his settings. He has a VKB stick and he has a verbal throttle. We'll have him put his settings in there. And I'll put all the rest of my settings in. So you guys can steal our settings. I don't care. One thing you can do if you need to, though, is you can clear your device bindings and things like that. And then you can, even though it's not showing up right here, we can reload um, defaults as the settings. It won't show up again until I close the game and bring it back up. But it will show that I can immediately switch to that. If you have something like a... Thrustmaster Warthog with a HOTAS, an X-52, which is, I do have an X-52 that I don't use for Star Citizen anymore. Uh, one of these joysticks over here, even though I don't recommend the, the Thrustmaster setups from Star Citizen, you can just load their default and get used to that if you want to. It is completely up to you how you make your buttons go. But with that being said, let me hop off of the mouse here. I do. I will have to go back to the mouse to do Moby Glass and things like that. Um, but let me bring up my sticks, and so they should should be showing up on the screen right now. Now I have my right stick. So here we go. This is my right stick controlling attitude. So I can pitch right. I can uh, yaw left and right. I can do both directions at the same time much easier than I can with a mouse and keyboard. And I can throw some roll into this sucker. In addition to that, at the same time, my left stick, when I push forward, I get forward thrust. When I pull back, I get backward thrust. When I go to the left, I get left thrust. Right thrust when I push to the right. When I twist, I will go up or I will go down. So I can do all of these different things all at one time, right? I can do a whole bunch of these at one time. And that, my friends, is called six degrees of freedom. That is where that comes from, is you can move your sticks in six different axes and you can do a lot of them at the same time. So I also have some setups here where my this is my main guns here. My fire group one is my left trigger. When I fire group two, it shows up as my fire two. Um, we need to bring up what, what I all have on my joystick thing. Cause I know I do not remember. Um, I believe I have my operator modes on here as well. So you can see I'm in gun mode right now. If I need to switch to missile operator mode, I hit the missile operator mode button. Boom. Now I'm in my, uh, my settings for my missiles <clears throat> and I have some, uh, set, uh, it doesn't show up on the screen, but I have some set, uh, scroll wheel that will move around my missiles and things like that. Um, I also have a button set up for targeting, even though we don't have a target right now. Um, that's my target reticle button. Um, when I switch over to different missiles, it's a different button that doesn't show up, but I know which one it is. So um, back to guns on my left stick, we have going forward, we have the boost. And so that's its own button. Um, I can move back the uh, the acceleration. See, I messed that up. It's actually the wrong one I set up. So again, I have to come in here all the time and, and remember what I did. Because to be honest, I haven't been playing a lot of Star Citizen for dogfighting anymore. Um, because I just don't see the point until 3.18 actually comes out live. So that's on me. But let me change this velocity limiter to relative instead of ABS. I think that's what it's supposed to be. Yep. Now it goes up and down like it's supposed to, my velocity limiter. So I can, uh, you know, go forward with boost. I can hit the space brakes. That's its own button. Um, when I hit a decoy, that's its own button. 
and then a noise is its own button. So those are the ones you're actually going to see on the screen. Um, I do have a couple more buttons set up, but that's really for the dogfight. Um, and that's and that's not there's there's already enough on the screen if you know what I'm saying. So basic flight tutorial. That's kind of how it goes. I, I don't want to go too much in depth uh, with it because it really needs to be customized to what you want. But I've shown you how I set up my buttons, how to fix inversion control settings. If you have a Hotas, you might have to do that as well. I know Java's throttle is always backwards. Um, you have to have your joysticks powered on when you start Star Citizen in order for those settings to reload. If you turn your joysticks on after Star Citizen starts, it's going to lose those settings and you got to reset them no matter what for inversion. So I wish that was something that was a persistence thing for 318. So I'm going to go find a dogfighting mission and we'll see you in the fight. All right, guys, so apologies if I'm a little bit quieter. I do have to sit further away from my from my mic because my sticks are mounted to my desk. And so I have to move my chair back a little bit. So hopefully it'll all be the same. Um, I do want to go over one of the big benefits. I'm trying to keep the sun out of everybody's eyes and the screen. One of the bigger benefits of having a stick versus a mouse is the level of accuracy. You can see when I move my mouse, I have this line and stuff, and it's easy to overcompensate with the mouse. With the stick, it's m it is much more precise in the way we're able to hone in on things and target things, right? I'm going to go ahead and turn my gimbals on. And it just seems to me that it's easier, one, to move in two directions at once, and... And it just it just feels easier, seems easier. So that's to me, that is the benefit of the stick. I wish that thing was not right in the sun. So coming up on combat, we're going to go ahead and switch over to our missiles. This is an HRT. I haven't done one of these in a while. I'm probably a little bit rusty. And there's my guy. So we're going to go ahead and target him. He's probably in some sort of an asteroid. We do have target acquired. Go ahead and fire a missile at him. Oh, I got... I got countermeasures on me. We're going to switch out of that mode. And we're going to start firing at him. What is he in? Oh, he's in a hurricane. But he's going to have quite a bit of fields. Maybe a little bit hard to kill. I am in the, the balanced setting for the guns. We'll see how that goes. I usually turn and maneuver a lot more also with my sticks. At least I try to. I do have his shields down. I can see that. You can see how those auto gimbals do tend to help a little bit. Easier for me to boost. Boom. The primary targets down. Let's get the next guy. If they don't all despawn. I should have gone after the, the additions first. So this is, looks like a Gladius. He's actually getting me. So I tend to rotate a lot more when I'm on my sticks. Like I said, I roll. Because I like to fight my guys going up and down. I, I use my boost a lot more. These uh, debris fields don't help because sometimes you do run into stuff. Beep. That guy went quick. I'm able to keep my stick on the target faster. Or no, maybe not faster, but I'm able to m maneuver my ship to just be. It just seems more accurate. This is. What is this guy in? Is it another Gladius? No, it's a Mustang Delta. And he's dead. Okay, who's next? Mopping up an HRT pretty darn quick here. Another Mustang Delta. I'm solo here in the Scorpius. Not that, not that I'm bragging, but yeah, I'm backing up. You can, I hope you're looking at the controls as I'm moving them. It's too hard to explain exactly what I'm doing the whole time. So boom, here we go, guys. <laughs> there is an, a solo HRT done pretty quickly with sticks. A uh, lot more accurate, I think. A lot faster. I'm able to maneuver, I'm able to roll, boost, go in these different axes and really just maneuver my ship uh, as quickly as I can. 
I probably should have got someone to do some chase camera footage of that um, because I felt like that was a pretty good fight for not having um, doing a lot of dog fighting lately. So <clears throat> now you know how to manipulate your controls and your settings. Um, you know what kind of sticks I have. The same principle applies to the T16000. So that is really key. I highly recommend you maybe start with someone else's setup and then mo either modify it or make your own setup for what your buttons do. You want, if you can remember your quantum button is this button, you know, button 22 or whatever it is, that's going to be your quantum button. And if you keep it like that, you're just going to remember it. You're going to get that, that muscle memory of the mind and remember everything. Um, and that's just the, the way I like to play. We've talked about inversion settings, figuring out what joystick does what. Sometimes you're going to have to be in the options menu quite a bit in free space. You can do it in Arena Commander. You can do it just floating around in space in game, um, in Armistice Zone or something like that. You can sit there and play with your your controls until you get everything dialed in. It does take a little bit of time. And like I said, I'm going to put my setup into the Discord so you guys can have that. I'll re-export it, actually. <laughs> Um, now that it has the fixed inversion setting for the dual verbal. Um, there's there's a lot of other videos out there on this stuff, and I appreciate you guys watching. Um, if you're looking for a decision of what stick setup to buy, my recommendation is always going to be the Hosass, and for good reason, because I think Six Degrees of Freedom is the ultimate way to fly a combat game in space, guys. That's the only way to do it. There is advantages to Jawa having his Hotas. I do get jealous of him having the, the extra levers and just the amount of buttons and controls on his Hotas because it's a verbal ho a verbal throttle and it's it's freaking awesome. I love that it has so much flexibility. Um, but he doesn't dogfight as much as I do. So I would recommend if you are going to be a dogfighter and you're going to be doing that type of stuff in Star Citizen a lot, especially in the future, and those are the type of missions you like, I highly recommend the Hosas setup. Thanks for watching, guys. And now on to the next part of the video where I think Jawa's actually going to talk about his Hotas. Coming up next is Jawa with the tried and true Hotas system with a mixed setup of VKB uh, stick and a verbal throttle. All right, this part is the hands on stick and throttle or Hotas. This is my preferred method. I have a stick to my right, which is a VKB space control grip on a gunfighter base. And on my left, I have a verbal throttle. And I am just very happy with the way these two set up. Yes, two different brands, but they work seamlessly. So on my stick, I have, when I twist, I have my roll. If I push to the left, I have yaw. And then of course, forward and back is pitch. And then on my right, I have throttle, which you can see over there. And then around where my pinky is, I have a little dial that I can increase the, um, I can increase and decrease the uh, limiter. So it is awful nice there. Although, I'm sorry, but yeah, if, if you look on the screen, it's uh, my limiter's backwards. So no problem. So there is, all right, so yeah. So on this, down is uh, all the way up on the limiter, and then up is all the way down on the limiter. So, but uh, that just shows you with the limiter. Now, one thing I can do is reset the uh, limiter to uh, SEM because there's a button on the other side there. So that doesn't really show it on the indicator, except, but it says SEM reset. You saw that button pop in. So, um, yeah, now this is just how I like to fly. So um, let's go try a um, bounty mission now, and I'll probably do a little bit better. So we'll see you when we get out there. All right, here we go. 
Get target lock. And missile. Alright. And there he goes. Alright. And there he goes. Right, so let's see if any more of his friends are around that it should be. Well, contract completed. Well, that was pretty darn easy. Took it, took almost no time. As you can see, it's a lot easier for me with uh, my HOTAS than it was with the gamepad controller. So, um, yeah, this is my preferred method, and I still need improvement on that, but. Um, yeah, I, I've gotten a lot better than I was, so, and I just love this HOTAS. So, anyway, let's see. What I'm going to do is head on down to this moon down here real quick and do some low flying. So, I'll see you when I get down there. All right, let's get low and get fast. Get rid of my gimbals here. Don't think I'll need those anymore. All right, so yeah, this is this is how I enjoy flying. The when I've uh, flown in a real airplane, um, I use my uh, stick to bank like this, and then I use uh, it, to yaw like this. I'm using my rudder pedals, so that's something I had to get used to with this. But it is so much better for this type of flying for combat and everything it is so much better to have your yaw right here on the stick and then twist you don't really twist all that much because maybe down here in atmosphere you would use uh, the aerodynamics of the airplane of the aircraft sorry um, but in space you don't because there's no air so you really don't need that so let's see if I can't get low here Whew. Yeah, this is the way I love to fly. Let's see. I think I got a bad guy over here. What do we got? So now nah, I'm going to leave him alone. So anyway, all right. So yeah, I just have lots of control here. And I can rest my right arm. I don't, I don't need to constantly keep it on the stick. So, um... And I kind of find the throttle is a nice hand rest. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, though, I was using my um, my thrusters here. I'm able to use those with my index finger on the front of the uh, on the front of the throttle. So and so I can I can uh, strafe up, down, left and right. So that is that's the way I fly. So I just really love this method. All right. And so the last thing I'm going to show you is some mining. Um, and we'll just go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and swap out my uh, Titan here for a uh, prospector. And I'll see you in the belt. All right. I brought you out here to the Air and Halo to show you how I use my HOTAS uh, for mining. So first of all, um, I have my ping set up on my throttle it's a kind of a um thumb button there and i yeah and i've already come out here uh look we got some gems uh there so got hand mineables and look at this nice big old quantanium rock here so on the base of my um uh, throttle i have other switches and buttons so i have one of those bound you will not see that on the screen but I assure you it's there so and I can move forward see I'm using my throttle just a little bit to move forward and I'm in the optimum range I'll give this a shot with the quantanium and uh, if you look here to uh, just right under where it says sparky you'll see mining laser you'll see that that's what I'm using uh, so I uh, use the regular fire button and it fires up and I'll go ahead and increase my throttle here. 
and kind of search around here for a better in a better uh, place to crack the rock. It's 4,800. We should be able to do this. So I uh, just kind of go around. I'm using my uh, stick to do that. So and I can go forward just a little bit. Let's see here. Yeah, it's starting to climb now. I have a reverse button up here on the top of my stick where my pinky is, and you can see that. So I can just kind of do very fine adjustments. And we're trying to get up there into that green. So let's go ahead and get a little closer. And I will set the reverse to get away just in case. But we're climbing up there. And yeah, we'll get up there, hopefully. You kind of move around a little more. Yeah, the climbing is the tough part here. All right, now we're getting in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start reducing the mining laser with my flaps control. Let it get up a little. You see it dies down there. And let's back up just a touch. And yeah, and if I need to add more, I can add more. It's just really precise control. And when you're mining Quantanium, you definitely want that. So, and the Lancet doesn't hurt either. So back up a little more, and a little more. So yeah, just keep it in that green. Let's see, hopefully, back up. All right, and crack that rock. So um, I'm gonna crack another one, or crack this up a little bit, and then I'll show you how to extract. So I'll uh, be right back. All right, so we're going to go ahead and, um, and extract it. What I'm going to do is hit my mode select, which is my missile select, but I have it set for mining, that it, set it sets it over to extraction, and just pull the trigger. And in comes quartz and quantanium. we got a nice load there. So anyway, that is how you use the HOTAS for uh, mining. So if you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. And um, we'll definitely see you there. Stop by, visit our channel. And uh, this is my preferred method with the HOTAS. So call me a traditionalist, but it is the way I enjoy, um, it is the way I enjoy flying. Nope, I'm still in reverse, there we go. Now go forward again. So um, off to our next section. Finally, friends. Fist and I will both try out the home os method of control. Up first is Fist. All right, guys, so this two five here again. Uh, I guess I'm, I don't know if I'm first or last in the in the home moss setup, but this is hands on mouse and stick. So on the screen, I have both my stick and my mouse on here. So my mouse is going to control the attitude of my ship. going to control how I fire and things like that. I have my missile operator mode tied to my mouse. Um, how many missiles I load is actually on the keyboard, so I will have to move my hands. Um, but I can switch them out pretty easily. My acceleration is on, is on my mouse wheel. This is going to be weird because I'm not used to it. But moving my ship for thrust forward and back and all that is actually on my left stick. And because I told you before that... I, I usually want to use my sticks. I sit back a little further. This is going to be a little bit weird for me moving around and stuff, but it, it should be pretty darn interesting. But I am going to have to reach back to my keyboard. So that's why I, this is not going to be a primary mode uh, that I choose for this kind of stuff. So with that being said, um, house hands on mouse and stick homos. Um, I don't want to talk too much about flying around and stuff. That's already been explained. Let's do a combat mission and let's see how I feel. So just hang on. Hi right, guys, so I am in the the Scorpius. Um, here's the thing. 
I don't have any roll options in Homas because normally my roll is set up either on my right stick or on the keyboard. That's going to be really weird for me um, because I do tend to roll a lot in combat. So I don't I mean, I'm going to try this out, but I tell you right now, it feels really weird for me. And I don't like it. I would have to make something so I could roll. Maybe I would change my up and down strafe to on my left stick to roll. Um, I also don't have a way to target without actually reaching for the keyboard and hitting the T key. So I know I could put that on a mouse button or something like that. But I do want to see how it kind of feels in combat, even though I'm not going to be able to roll or anything like that. Maybe Jabba will set his stuff up different. It's the first time either of us are really going to try this. So it, it should be pretty interesting. We know that. Oh, there's the Valkyrie. We know this is going to be a bad guy. Oh, that's our main bad guy. Oh, wait till he's red. There we go. Missiles away. Missiles away. Missiles away again. Oh. Oh, this is weird. A lot of firepower on them, though. It's weird because of the position of my hands. the HRT with the Valkyrie. I'm getting shots on him. I know I'm getting shots on him, but Woo, he went up pretty quick. So now I got to hit the T key again. I don't like that. What is this? A stalker? An Avenger? That Valkyrie went up pretty quick. The Scorpius ain't no joke, though. I'll tell you what. It's a heck of a fighter. Probably my fighter of choice right now. I just had to pick a fighter. Okay, another Tiki. I don't like taking my hand off my sticks when I do that. Especially because these guys like to joust. At least for now, until we get these master modes in here. Which I'll pro we'll probably have to redo this video when we have master modes in. But we've been promising this video all year, and sorry it took till December for us to really get to writing this and, and getting it out, but... Hey guys, we've been we've been busy. We have real lives too. So, <laughs> but you guys know that. Oh, I don't like being dead stick. When I target, I would definitely definitely have to set up a target key. And the roll isn't as bad as I thought because you kind of naturally roll when you yaw in this game anyway. For some reason, it looks like we're gonna wipe out of HRT pretty quick. And there we go. So an HRT with a Valkyrie this time instead of a Hurricane. Um, just about the same as it felt before um but it didn't feel as good as doing it with the stick having this stick and being able to roll and shoot my weapons like that my quantum is on my right stick my missile operator mode is up there that's on my my mouse too but it just feels different guys it feels different so there's the whole moss setup um i honestly would I would prefer both my host ass and my mouse and keyboard to a home moss, um, if I was going to be honest. But it is an option out there. Maybe it feels good for you guys. You saw that it is certainly effective to solo an HRT. Not that that's a hard mission to do, uh, but, you know, some people aren't very good at dogfighting. So <laughs> maybe that's that's something that's hard for them to do. Um, I don't know. I don't know what your situation is. But it was interesting. I know Cobra TV loves it. Um, I'm just, it's not for me. Uh, I'm going to stick to the way I've been doing things because it's comfortable and that's what I like. I And I'm an old man, right? So I like my mouse and keyboard for just, like right now, even though my sticks are on, uh, right here, I'm done with combat. I'm switched directly over to mouse and keyboard. I want to sit closer to my screen and enjoy these gorgeous graphics of Star Citizen. And it's easy for me to hit W and S and roll around and move my stick with the mouse and all that stuff. It's easy for me to do it. It's it's second nature at this point. We're playing this game too long, I guess. Up next is Jawa using his Hotas throttle and the mouse in Homas control. All right, 
Homas, uh, hands on stick and mouse. Uh, Joe Sparky here. Uh, let's see how this goes. Let's see. I got buttons on my uh, throttle, which is going to be the stick. And um, so I have a little bit of cheat here that I can use. And come on. Uh, trying to call for takeoff. Ah, there it goes. All right. So he, I tried to grab my uh, stick, but no, I'm going to use mouse. This is going to be interesting. Never used this method before. All right. Wait for that. And again, I'm kind of cheating here because I have the. Um, I can go up with my throttle. Okay. Sounds like somebody's getting shot at here. Again, I can do my gear. Oh, almost grabbed my stick again, so, oh wow. Okay, so hopefully there's nobody around here. All right, let's go ahead and take off. Thank you. Uh, and I can throttle up and down and go back to SEM. That's nice, but let's see. Um, hmm. Uh, yeah. There's fire. All right, so yeah, I don't have anything selected there. Uh, yeah. So anyway, let's go ahead and uh, we're gonna try and find a mission and I'll see you for some dog fighting, all right? All right, um, yeah, I've engaged here and this is not what I'm used to. Let's see if I can't get him though. All right, well, he's swearing at me. There he goes. All right. Well, um, this is not how I'm used to flying. So, but I did get him. So it's a lot better than the um, uh, game pad. So let's go ahead and go down and do some low flying and see how it does down there. Okay, I'll tell you one thing I don't like about this. Um, I can't roll. So, um, I'll have to go over here to the keyboard, but yeah, but straight, that's fine. But let's go ahead and see how this thing goes. Let's get low and get fast here. Whoa, whoa, okay. This is not, at, whoa, okay. All right, let's get low. All right, so let's see. Yeah, it's not too bad. I'm gonna turn off my quantum and let's see. Whoa, that's the wrong way. Yeah, this is not relaxing at all. Ah! Yeah, it's not relaxing at all. It does do it, but... I mean, in a pinch, I guess I could do this. But, yeah, this is... I, I mean, I'm sitting forward in my chair right now, and um, I'm really having to concentrate. Uh, yeah, this is... This is not fun. Uh, my only savior is I have my uh, thrusters on my um, throttle that I can maybe get myself out of trouble with. So, yeah, whoa, okay. Whoa, and then I rolled again. Uh, okay, yeah, okay, um, yeah. Anyway, um, I guess this would work in a pinch. But this would not be my preferred method of flying because it's, for me, it's just not relaxing. So, um, you know what? I'm gonna fly through this last canyon here and then I'm gonna go ahead and take off and go back to my HOTAS, all right? Hey, thanks for watching. Now that we are done, Fist, what are your final thoughts on controls in Star Citizen? So my thoughts really when it comes down to what controls I want to use for Star Citizen, I really like the HOSAS, but I really only like it when I'm doing things like dogfighting. I use the mouse and keyboard for 90% of the game from moving around stations and especially in the FPS part. Uh, controlling my ship in and out of hangars and the stations and general flying around planets and moons and in space. 
I do that because I'm used to it. The WASD and the mouse, the, the, the control keys, shift, the space bar, it all comes pretty natural to me because I've been playing those type of games on PC for literally 30 plus years, decades. So I'm used to it. But when I am dogfighting, it, it gets a little different. It's not as precise for me as I want it to be. So instead of using mouse and keyboard, which I still do sometimes if, if I'm caught unawares or my joysticks aren't turned on, I, I do prefer when I'm specifically dogfighting to use Hosas. The six degrees of freedom that it gives you is, to me, unparalleled in a space or dogfighting simulator that's in mostly zero gravity or the use of thrusters since we don't have controllable surfaces in game. What I mean by that is my right hand can control the attitude of the ship, um, the rolls, the pitch, and the yaw, and my left hand controlling forward and back thrust, side to side or strafing thrust, as well as uh, uh, up and down movements. Having Those are the six degrees, and having that tied with a pretty minimal set of buttons, because uh, I use a keyboard for a lot of other things, like I'll put my landing gear up because the end key is real close to me. So I, I, that's the setup I prefer to use. I've been using it for years in Star Citizen, and I like it. It works for me, but it may not work for you. Maybe you like the tactile feel of a throttle and being able to push forward into military power or engage afterburners at a certain level. For me, I, I have no problem just clicking my left stick's trigger, and boom, there's afterburner. So it, it really does depend on the individual and the kind of things that they like and what they like to feel when they're flying around. I'm just giving my opinions here. Those are my thoughts. What about you, Jawa? As I mentioned, I, I really enjoy using my gamepad controller. It, it gives me the immersion I really enjoy. I'm able to just sit back in the chair, guide my character around, take in the scenery. It, it's just really nice. Unfortunately, the problems with not being able to access elevators and a couple other things with the gamepad controller make it kind of a bummer. Uh, hopefully they'll bring those features in for the gamepad controller. As for um, flight controls, I really like my HOTAS. Call me a traditionalist. I, I like um, the throttle on one side and the stick on the other. Uh, and as I mentioned that my uh, throttle has a lot of different buttons on it. Uh, so I'm able to bind everything to that and same thing with my stick on my right. It's just, for me, that's just the way I prefer. As for the home mouse or hands on mouse and stick, um, it's okay. Um, it's just, I, I, I guess I, I don't have as gentle of a touch on the mouse as I would like. Uh, maybe I can adjust some controls on my mouse, but um, it's just, I'm kind of all over the place. Um, so it's nice to have it there, but, and if you dial it in right, maybe it'll be perfect for you. So uh, give it a shot. Well, it looks like it's time to end the video, Jawa. Thank you all very much for watching. We appreciate you taking the time to watch us today and hope to see you back in the channel soon. If you have any questions or just want people to play with, please check out the Sons of Valhalla Discord. The link is in the description below. Take care, everyone, and good night, Stanton. And happy mining.